What's up, y'all? It's Rio Harris, and we are tapped in with the Perfect Network. Got a good group with us today. Some uh, Everybody in music here, right? Everybody? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, cool. So, yeah, I'll go ahead and introduce. Ladies first, man. Okay, Always. gotta go ladies, right? <laughs> <laughs> What's up? So, name, where you from? Lola Monroe from D.C. From D.C. Mm-hmm. Huh? Phoebe, a.k.a. Brittany B. from Compton, California. Fire. And I'm Prince, a.k.a. Poppy Rose, and I'm from Miami. Okay, fire. Brand. So look, so we're going to jump straight into it, right? So what Zodiac sign do y'all got beef with? Oh, t- easy. easy. Scorpios. Scorpios. Uh, uh, uh. Easy. Scorpios. Scorpio. Hold up, Brittany. Hold up. I ain't going to hold you. Scorpios. I was in love with a Scorpio. It's always but like listen. that. It's always listen. like that. Yeah. Most of my homegirls, the date is Scorpio, Mel is Scorpio. Yeah. Got beef with Are you yeah. a Scorpio? I am. But Ooh. see women Blown. but see women, I love y'all. It'd be like that. Yeah. It's like that with my homies. I love y'all. So yeah, what's like what's that. what's the beef with the Scorpios? It was a it was a dude who hurt <laughs> you. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> First of all, don't don't be reading my trauma like that. Oh, you know okay, <laughs> look, you gonna spark something up real don't quick. Don't read me like that. No, yeah. you know what it is? I just feel like so I'm an Aries. Oh, okay. first and foremost, I'm an Aries. Hey, we're actually so amazing. Yes, yeah. you're, I'm a Libra. Yes, we are. We are. Yeah. Yes. And my ex was a Libra, which is so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. My ex was a Libra. But the one for him was a Scorpio. And uh, I just feel like they live in their own world, number one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they yeah. are um, very charismatic people. Um, can come off like very good natured and good hearted, but at the same time, um, it's very like secretive in yeah. a sense, like sneaky. And Hmm. so that's what I experienced was a lot of, like, sneakiness and, like, secretiveness. And it just, yeah, nah. Okay. Yeah. For me, a Scorpio, I've never uh, dated a Scorpio because it's never gotten to that point. For me, a Scorpio, there's always, like, this, like, sexual chemistry. Like, I'm always attracted to them and, like, we'll initially be attracted to each other physically and sexually. But, like, once we start to peel back them layers, it's like... They're, I feel like they're emotionless, which is crazy because they, they are emotional, yeah. but just, I guess, just not with a Libra. Maybe I'm too emotionally sensitive. I don't know. But Scorpios, <laughs> yeah. respectfully, have just been kind of like bitches. Like, they're rude. They're cutthroat. Don't give a fuck. Yeah. Like, okay, nigga, I ain't got time for this shit. Mm. On to the next. It's like, damn. Gotcha. So is that who you got beef with? Is, is we only got beef oh, with Scorpios. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really only the Scorpio, we only got beef with Scorpio. You too? A Scorpio? I was it's a Scorpio. Also Tauruses. That is crazy. Like a Taurus. Like Taurus is like. Oh, you know what? I'm so sorry. Sag. Okay. Oh, my yeah. God. Sagittarius. My mom's a like Sag. Demons. Yeah, that's December, What's right? Sign? I'm a Virgo. Yeah. You think you know everything. Oh, okay. Yeah. Virgo and Scorpios. Yeah. 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 I mean, Me and Virgos balances. get along. I, I, Virgos and Scorpios. Yeah. Okay. Great balances. Heard, yeah. Scorpios and Libras. Not they don't, so much. Not at all. Eye to eye. Yeah. Aries and Scorpio, they can either click really perfectly or it's a battle. It was click it's very perfectly. Yeah. yeah. Click very perfectly. The only thing with Libras and Scorpios is good sex. Everything else is shit. I mean, Communication. that's just Scorpios, period. <laughs> <laughs> that's just Scorpios, period. You ever tried a Libra? No. Oh, I'm, your life will be changed. But when I meet Libras, it's just like, eh. I know, we it, just it don't. Get, it get like a little. Yeah, it just don't work. It don't. You know, it's crazy. I don't know why. It's the only sign. So that is a great. We actually click very well, but they're demons. Yeah. <sighs> so as far as rebranding, right, um, I think, you know, probably all of us have had a stage or a point in time where it was like time to go a different route, you know, with what we were known for, what you know, the public eye saw us as. So does anybody want to touch on, like, where your rebrand started or what kind of that process was like? Well, for me, third time's a charm. Hopefully, God damn it, I'm going (laughs) through the third one. Um, The first time that I went through it was, um, I think, when I got on Love & Hip Hop. And I was, you know, tapping into my, like, artistry. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go buy this. I'm rocking this pink, killing it, fuck what anybody got to say. And it just was not sticking. It just was not sticking. So then I rebranded myself again and um, tried that. And I, I'm, I was rocking with it, but then I kind of like went through, you know, some tumultuous situations that kind of like sent me back, having like depressed for a little bit, having the blogs and the news and shit, had to go through that. 
and now it's kind of crazy. I'm actually kind of going through the third one right now. So yeah. hopefully it works out for me. Okay, gotcha. So what's what's the new transition right now? Which which you kind of um, straying away I, away from or what? I guess straying away from maybe like um, old behaviors that may have gotten me into some like you know some shit. But like what? <laughs> <laughs> Just like being, I'm, I'm I'm actually pretty abrasive and confrontational. Okay. Like I really don't take no shit, and I, yeah. I feel like that's actually an issue. Like that's my problem. I, take, I don't. I feel like I'm so far to the left. Like there's no balance. I've taken a lot of things personal. It's very interesting. Like I saw this um clip that went viral today with uh, Pharrell, when it's just like you know don't take anything personal, just um you know acknowledge it and correct it, and that's kind of like what I've been practicing. It's been working out for me okay. very very well, I must say. So yeah. you know, I think that's like my biggest man, yeah. my biggest issue. We're going to clip up some good clips of your conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Keep all the messy ones out, you know? Anybody else? You guys got any, any yeah. kind of rebrands? I'm definitely going through a rebrand right okay. now. From what to what? So, I feel like my... Well, this is my third rebrand as well. <laughs> yeah, so Three my second... Yeah, my second... Well, I'll say this. Every rebrand for me wasn't based on um, just something not working out. It's just my life evolves and as my life evolves I kind of you become a different person, person. Mm-hmm. so you kind of can't put your art out in the same kind of way and I feel like that ends up being my wake-up call like okay it's time if I'm start if I start battling with putting my art out um, and not wanting to not relating it to how I used to put it out before then it's it'll just be a wake-up call like okay it's time to rebrand it's time to show the world how things have changed in your personal life so the second time was when I went from model to officially putting on my music, and I went from Angel Lola Love to Lola Monroe. And now, you know, I have a family, had a child, went vegan, my whole lifestyle changed, wellness, health, just everything. So, so it's more like a... Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> now it's like it's the like, rebrand. The so it's not necessarily a rebrand. It's more like a redirect. You're just redirecting yourself. Yeah, you know, like yeah. you're good. It's just, it's just re- and re- a reintroduction there you go. to who the new me is. Yeah. Who I've evolved from. And then, Brittany, so, like, I've heard a lot about the... Uh, people saying, like, they went from these reality TV shows and stuff and then, like, hit a depression either during or after. Whew. And then, like, you just said it a second ago, and did that... Did that ever happen to you, or was that a part of your rebrand at any, at any point? Um, no, not necessarily at all. I feel like for me, um, it was very interesting because I went on Love and Hip Hop um, kind of blindly in a sense. I never necessarily watched the show. Um, I wasn't really akin to like what really went on on the, on the show. Um, I wasn't a big reality TV watcher, yeah. um, and more or less, I had a career prior to the show, in a sense. So, yeah. like, I wasn't, you know, like, it wasn't for me to, like, be like, oh, Grammys I want to do were this. Be- Grammys before the, the Grammys show. were before, yeah, like, yeah. all that stuff was kind of, like, happening yeah. concurrently with the show. So, um, now that I'm no longer, like, doing Love & Hip Hop, um, I feel, like, I'm not necessarily re- rebranding at all. I feel like I'm just kind of in a space of, like, just growing. Like, that was a season in my life. Um, and it was really fun, and it was a great learning lesson and a great experience. And I remember that time for you. <laughs> yeah, and for those who know me or knew me before that, um, it's just very interesting. Like, just yeah, I don't feel like. Um, and coming off of the show, I'm not gonna say I was like depressed. I feel like it was more of like very eye opening in terms of the industry and what the industry has to offer in terms of how um, perception can be reality for some people, right? Um, And how they can perceive you. Um, Because I know who I am, and a lot of my friends know who I am, but then there's also this Britney B that people know just from clips that they see on a a show, right? And think that they know, right? Um, And that can have some weight um, in our real world. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so I feel like I've done um, a pretty good job (laughs) of, I guess, um, moving forward with my life from that, right? And continuing to add chapters in my book 
past love and hip hop. Like I haven't stayed in that particular chapter of my life. It's been like, all right, she did that. Now she doing this. Now she doing this. And then she doing this. And now she doing this. And so, yeah, so I don't really look at it as like, um, I mean, I was sad, like a little bit, like, why are they saying that about me? But then at the same time, it's like, all right, cool. They saying that about me. Cool. Okay, now say this about me. <laughs> you know, too. So, yeah. So, so yeah. I wanted to speak about, actually, I, I want to speak about men's mental health for a mm-hmm. second, right? So, did you guys ever deal with any men who are kind of going through anything that you just had to help them through? Or, like, kind of what is your take on, like, a men's mental health and, like, communication? Because we don't really communicate or, you know, we tend to not communicate and, like, express ourselves, um, kind of just, like, bottle up a lot, kind of go with emotions, you know? So have you guys, as, you know, strong strong black women, like, you know, supported men in any type of mental way? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've been with my person for over a decade. Wow. Um, and so, yeah creating that that safe space Mm -hmm. for them to um, express in their own way because men don't express the same way that women express, you know, and just, I think that one of the key things that um, he has even mentioned is sometimes you have to let men figure things out the way they figure things out. And I think that as women, sometimes we look at them and say, talk about it. Why aren't you saying it? Why aren't you, you know? And I think it's just giving room to listen more than you project and more than you expect them to, like, okay, are you going through something? So I think it's just giving them space to express themselves in their own way and let you know how they want it done or how they want to be able to get through things. Yeah. I would say I don't really communicate when I'm, like, Put on the spot and ask to communicate. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I communicate as a man like when I'm just in a in an open space and I just feel like I can express myself in a certain way. But when I'm just put on the spot and I'm I feel like it's a test. It's too much, yeah. Yeah. So mm-hmm. kind of similar. Are you like? Because you said you just kind of put things out there, and I was well, that was your old you. Was well, you see, I have five sisters, and I was raised by the women in my life, and they've always. T- They've always expressed to me how they appreciate a man that can be vulnerable and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I've I've never had a problem with being like transparent and or vulnerable. But what the about issue with that the I women that you date? Like it might be different when it's your That's sisters and stuff. Yeah. The thing. This the issue that I have run into is that I feel like when I do express myself or I vocalize how I feel or I am vulnerable, the vulnerabilities that I show are thrown back in my face when there's a there's a you know, a fight or an Say I like I talk about like say like the issues that I have with my mother. Now all of a sudden, oh well, this is why X, Y, and Z is going on with your mom. So, and then even moving past relationships, just in life, like speaking up on how I feel or what's going on or how I'm thinking or what's going on, I've always just kind of like been ostracized or like made fun of. And that's what I was saying. As I was saying earlier, how I was like, oh well, I've been trying this new thing out and it's been working out for me. Well, one of those methods is just shutting the fuck up and not saying anything, which kind of like sucks because have to find very specific outlets or or the safe space to kind of like let it out and I I, I don't know my situation is a little bit different like because you know, my family's not really like in my life like that and it's a little bit different so I don't necessarily feel like I've ever had a safe space to like really say it on because again even with the women that I've loved it's either been thrown back in my face when they're mad which you know I get it you know we talk our shit when we're upset but it's never been safe personally so that's why I was like now nah, I just try this like new thing like even with like speaking up in the blogs or in interviews or podcasts speaking on certain topics like I've only ever really garnished like animosity towards me or I've been labeled as like sassy or which I don't give a fuck I, I wear it you know what I'm saying because I'm gonna say how I feel but in terms of like life situations I've just kind of like learned like man it is kind of like it's better just keep that shit to yourself which you know yeah. B we could we could switch it um, so, so yeah no, oh, mental well. health for you or you or you could touch yeah. on the same one about how you support them. So for me now, um, I'd say with being on such a big platform um, and having that experience for myself, it definitely um, thickened my skin, right, um, and strengthened my mental health. I will say that for sure. 
Um, and I do have four brothers. Um, I am the oldest. Um, I'm the only girl. And so my brother is incarcerated. He's been incarcerated for about um, 14 years now. And my baby brother, we're very close. And I've seen how mental health affects him, you know, while he's incarcerated. And it comes out in different ways for him, you know. Uh, and also, like, in relationships, too, like, just seeing how people cope with things. And so I'm really, really, really big now on my mental health and, like, taking self-care days. Um, you know, I even wrote a song on my last album called Self-Care, right? Just a self-care day, like, making sure that um, I'm taking care of myself. Like, when I don't want to do something now, I just don't do it. I just don't, you know? Like, um, having, like, self-regulating, you know? Taking, like, having mental check, check-ins, check-ins with yourself, you know? How are you feeling? Um, because it's important. It's, like, super important, especially in the industry that we're in, um, and especially for myself as a creative because I'm always day in and day out working with other creatives, right, and pouring my emotions um, into them, dealing with people. I'm, you know, I work in a people-facing environment all the time, so I sometimes I'm just drained, drained. you know? I'm just drained. Sometimes I come home, and I just don't want to do shit. I don't want to listen to music because I'm making music all day. I don't want to talk to anybody, you know? Um but you can't pour from an empty cup, yeah, definitely. you know? So I just, I'm very, very cognizant now of just taking care of myself. So, and then this is also a group conversation. So if you got questions for them, they got questions <laughs> for you, whatever. Okay. But yeah. um, I wanted to touch, because you said you've been with your partner for 12 years? No, it's um, almost going on 17 years now. 17 yeah. years. Wow. That's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So do you ever feel like there's no FOMO with you? Like, it's, it's just, you've been with your person for so long. Are you just so used to this person? Like, what do you do when you guys are arguing and stuff? Because this is all you know. So just this one person. Well, I'll say the number one thing is that person got to be your best friend. Mm -hmm. And that's my best friend. So, you know, everyone goes through things. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. But if the person that you're looking at is your best friend, then it's easier to get through things. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, I definitely don't have FOMO. Um, yeah. It's just, it's, it's, it's not really in me. When I lock into someone, I lock into them. So yeah. I don't, you know. Like but definitely the best friend aspect and dealing with that person as your friend mm -hmm. allows you to get through so many different things. And can I say something for that? So watching y'all, the times that I've been around y'all, um, he respects you and you respect him. Absolutely. And I love that about y'all, like you. to the utmost. Thank you. Thank and when you're not around in the times that I've seen him, he's still respecting you. Thank you. you get what I'm saying? Thank Through you, his yeah. actions and his behavior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you yeah. respecting him. Thank your you. actions and your behavior, and Thank I think that's super big yeah, in a relationship. Yeah, you know sure. what I mean? Respect is very, very important. Like for real. Sure. And like, the value. Do you yeah. value that person? Do you respect them? Um, yep. It's like the way that you would deal. That's why I say I think sometimes like people get together and they don't deal with that person as someone that they care about and yep. they love. Mm -hmm. Once you become that whole label of just boyfriend and girlfriend, yeah. it takes away the friendship, takes away the authenticity. And like, you know how you treat your homegirls and yep. how you, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It removes it. So I feel like. <laughs> love, respect, value as a friend first and foremost, yep. and building that foundation. Me and him were friends for like a whole year first, and then uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were just strictly friends, best friends. Like yeah. that was my dog. And then you, you know, you fall in love, you get together, and we literally are together all the time. Yeah. So it ain't. So when you say FOMO, it's like nah, yeah. like that's my we together that's my all homie, the time. Yeah. yeah, we don't really get. It don't get boring or. Tiring. It gotta be like that though. Yeah, it got to. Yeah, yeah. And I like that. Yeah, because my my best relationship. Um, I didn't know, like, how important it was with like actually having that person be your best friend because I realized um, after my last partner, I was like, I didn't really have a good connection with none of my other past partners. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, even I, me thinking I love them and stuff. When I went back and thought about it, I'm like, we used to just spend time together and not even say nothing. Yeah, like and we it's didn't like, laugh at the same stuff. We mm -hmm, didn't have that mm -hmm. same connection, you know. So, 
um, you know, finding that is definitely important. Yeah. yeah. Just so being comfortable with somebody. Just yeah, being comfortable. Even when you were saying, like, being expressive. So when you're dealing with your homegirl, your homeboy, and they talking to you about something, right, and they might vent to you about whatever they're going through. If y'all get into an argument, they're, you're not about to bring that up and throw it in their face, right? So I feel like dealing with your partner in that same kind of way, if y'all friends, mm-hmm. you're not going to take what somebody told you in their lowest moment and throw it in their face. Right. So you know what I mean? I was going to say, I thought you was going to say this, but I was going to say, or I was, this is what I was thinking, the opposite of that, being expressive. Mm-hmm. When you with your homegirls and your homeboys, you be super excited. When y'all excited about something, y'all be laughing, exactly. you be cackling, you have tears running on my face. You exactly. know how to like, you super comfortable on how you throwing jokes, all that stuff. If you can't be like that with your partner, it y'all not, right. it ain't right, right? Ain't right if right, you yeah. like all, mm, 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 you know, like. If you gotta be somebody else. Yeah, if you gotta be somebody else, then and, it's not and that's real. that's a key thing as well. Are you your true self with that person or do you have to be someone else? Can you, can you honestly, mm-hmm be stripped and be that person, be who you are. That I feel like that is going to help with the longevity in your relationship. Yep. <laughs> what you want to say? I, no, nah, I, I, I'm, I'm just taking it in. Take, well, have you experienced that? You, you ain't never had no girl just be your best friend like that? Yeah. Um, I think I, is think like I did. Is that the one that got away? Uh, she's not the one that got away. The one that got away is like she's the one that got away. She's a different one. That's a different story. I do think that I ended up finding who my soulmate was afterwards. This was, I could be stripped down bare, like I like I can be me. Mm-hmm. The issue is that we both. I can't speak for her and what her what hers is, but I know for me, and maybe it is me. I have unresolved trauma that I have to work through. Because the re- I think the reason that I have experienced like that love or the reason I'm not in a relationship where I'm like married and having kids yet um, is I feel like I've given so many pieces out to me to certain women that there's nothing left for me to give because the void that I'm trying to fill can't be filled by, you know, women's validation or their adoration. And I feel like I've kind of like been chasing that for so long. And so like when I have stumbled across the real real love because I have these unresolved issues, it seeps into the relationship and I can't be the man that I need to be for her. And at the same time, her ass wasn't perfect either. She doesn't seem to work on too. But I just can't speak <laughs> as to what her trauma may yeah. or may not be. But I know what mine is and, and why it's hindering me. So it's really just taking that leap of faith. But I just I'm so fucking stubborn. I feel like nigga, I can figure this shit out by myself. I don't even know goddamn therapist to walk me through this. But I clearly do. So. Have you tried therapy? Uh, I'm, I'm with you. On nope. That. Why haven't you tried it? <laughs> because, man, I am a weird individual. It's very, it's not easy to work with me. Like, I'm, I'm blessed, like, to have, like, people that do, like, fuck with me and, you know, deal with, like, my bullshit. It's, like, it's hard for me to talk to a man or connect with a man. It's just, mm-hmm. it's just weird. And then with women, it's, like, if they're too close to my age, it could be something else. Like, it mm-hmm. could easily assimilating to like me flirting or like i don't know it just just be happening but that could cool also be a part of why you need therapy yeah because if you're well, no. always leaning towards romantic it ain't me. relationship versus pl- like it platonic. don't it's not necessarily me though like i i never initiate or engage mm-hmm. like I, i'm sorry <laughs> no for real like I'm, I'm never the type of person like yo what's up what's your name like that like i i'm shy like i don't like i'm I, not shy yeah. but i'm shy when it comes to like that yeah so it has to be like an older woman that's kind of like a, a motherly yeah, figure, but it's you. hard to find. I'm not going to keep paying 250 a session until I come across or this you woman. Or you can heal yeah. yourself. Yeah. I'm trying. Or you can heal yeah. yourself. You, yeah. can, you can do shadow work. But that is a key thing. Um, when you're, You have to be whole. You got to be whole. And I'm not. Like, I used to say the whole, you know, my other half, and he used to say it too. And then we came to an understanding that you can't be like that. You have to be whole, and I have to be whole, and then we come together and we share mm-hmm. what we have together. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the traumas do play a part in that. Um, we got to heal ourselves. You know, I went yeah. through postpartum depression after I had my son, and I had to find myself. I had to heal myself. I had to figure it out. And once I healed myself and he went on his own journey, and we were able to even become closer and have a better relationship. So, yeah, that is a key thing, you know. A lot of people come to, to relationships with their own traumas and start projecting onto each other and then expecting you to heal me and then mm-hmm. I expect you. You get what I'm saying? And and it just it gets in the way. So Yeah. 
Yeah, I've been doing the healing yourself. Yeah, trying. That's the I, process. I went through that whole thing too. And it's hard. <laughs> it's not easy. It's hard looking at yourself like, damn, nigga, you gotta fix this. You gotta fix it. <laughs> you gotta like, you, you gotta, gotta change this. Yeah. What is what is fixing it look like for you? Um, accepting shit about myself that I that I maybe don't want to. That's one of them. You know. Um, you fate. accepted that you a flirt. <laughs> yeah, like, saying that, listen. I came out my mama flirt. That was, you know, what I'm saying, um, no, just certain, just certain little like nuances about myself, personality traits, character traits, uh, like just things that I just really just need to work on. Just traits that just aren't cute. They're not becoming for someone that like who I I think I am and who I have the potential to be. It's just things that I think are just ugly, yeah. and just like looking at yourself and like mm-hmm. seeing it, it's just like, damn, dude, like. You could be this, but you got this shit going on, and you gotta yeah. fix it, dog. Or yeah. like in the moment, catching it, it's just like fuck, dude. That shit is ugly. Yeah, that's yeah. a daily thing, though. Yeah, that's a daily, daily thing. I do a lot of um, meditation, a lot of manifestation for myself, and um, that's a daily thing that I do, like a daily self check of like, am I being a, the best a good human? Like, yeah, just am I being a good person to people? Like. Was that said the night the right way, right? Um, and like I'm not perfect. Sometimes I snap. I snapped the other day, like I, you know, because sometimes I'm triggered. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But at the same time, you have to check yourself on a daily basis with stuff, and um, and it's an it's a daily process of growth for it. Um, when I broke up with my Scorpio, <laughs> I was. That was the hardest breakup of my entire life. You broke it was, up with him. Yes. And it was hard for you. It was extremely hard for me. It was it was a year of I was at home. So why you do I it? was at home, curtains was closed, I was under the covers. I was like Nutty Professor eating the um <laughs> ice cream watching the, <laughs> I was sad. It was it was bad. It was really bad for me, you know? Um I joke a lot, you know what I mean? But um, that's that because sucks. I was smiling through my pain. You know what I'm saying? I can laugh about it now, but it was really bad. And it took me a long time to before I dated somebody again, right? And when I did, it was because I was healed. Yeah. You know, I had taken that time to um, work through it. And then I met somebody, my Libra. And that nigga was, he was <laughs> fine china. He was broken in a million pieces. That He was so bad. He was so goddamn broken. And and I was like, I can't be your therapist. I'm all, you know, I've just been my just therapist. Yeah, I just got here. You know what I mean? And I but I was able to identify so many things about him that yeah. um and see it and 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 love him through it and be like, yo, we can't be together because you are you have things that um are internal battles. You got some work to do. You have some work to do that only you can fix. That I that my love can't fix. That you want you want to love you want me to love you because you see the light, you feel the love on me, right? Yeah. The external validation from the woman, yeah. right? The things that you aspire to have or aspire to be or aspire to feel all the time from me because you're lacking. I can't give that to you. I can't you get, get you gotta first. give it to yourself. So let's be friends. I love you anyway, and I'm going to love you through your healing process. And so we're friends. You know, we're friends now. And I do love him very dearly, but we had to break up. I had to break up with him, you know, because I'm healed with a hard D at the end, you know, E-D. And he's, <laughs> and you know, and he's, you know, and he's, he's still working through it. He changed his ways and found himself. You spinning the block or what? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Where the Absolutely. shit? Where the, I'm trying to tell you where the shit. Absolutely. So he's a that, great person. So knowing that. How do you go about in another relationship? Like, how do you go and start pursuing another person or taking another person serious, knowing somebody else still has access to you? Well, time well, see, that's no where you're messing up because I'm not pursuing anybody. I'm, I'm, so I'm, not, so I'm never chasing. I'm always attracting. Okay, so you attracting, and then you meeting them halfway and doing, you know, like taking that some type of serious. How do you take somebody serious knowing that somebody else still has access to you? It's not have, about having access to someone. It's about the timing of your life and trusting that. So if that person is meant to be, then it's meant to be. 
So it is so. That's what that's what it says. That's what it that's what it so is. So it is written. That's what yeah, so it is written. Why, you know why I feel like you thinking? You, yeah, oh, he oh, trying. Well, because I'm I'm just thinking. I'm like I, I know the logic that you're trying to get. You know I I get what you're saying. He's trying to say like you got your door open. Yeah, it's it's cracked a open. But like situation to like the next man who steps in and who's like putting his all. But in. there has to be a next man that steps in if there's gonna be a next man. That's why it's the whole thing. Like if it's meant to be, because if she's supposed to be with that nigga, then there's not gonna be no one's gonna send her. If you believe in God, God's not gonna yep. send some man her way that's gonna sweep her for feet if it's meant to be or maybe she goes through a time caps with this person this thing gets healed and now you know what i'm saying like it's life is funny mm-hmm. man life you ever watch a romantic like movie yeah. it's just be, they're based on real life they are yeah they are. even life like the like notebook that. everybody says like the notebook is like just the greatest thing well that's like, a yo, fucking fairy tale i've never <laughs> seen that movie she just oh, i've never the, seen, it. Never seen it i've never seen it it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a fairy tale it's a woman who is cheating who who goes and Basically, this exact situation. She had her old, like, um, her old, like, high school thing that mm-hmm. was just so amazing. They split up, and uh, families took them to separate areas of life. And then she was about to get married to some rich, successful guy who loved her dearly. And then she ends up going back with the other dude, sneaking behind his back. See, I didn't say all gets, that, though. Yeah. I didn't want to say all that. She still lo- she loved, like, both of them. But then she was like, wait, I love him more, though. And then so... Dude was just left shitty, rich and but shitty. That's I mean, but you know, the thing is, that's a reality that that happens. Yeah. And it kind of goes back to the whole like men's mental health and you know, yeah. shit that they go through. And then it's even deeper because it perpetuates a cycle. Because <laughs> now, guess what? Yeah. Nah, I'm just saying because I'm because a, situations like that now perpetuate some kind of cycle. How y'all get that from that? Well, I'm just that's saying because exactly. look, how y'all get me saying that old boy is a good human? <laughs> nah, 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 well, he and that I hope he heals. And that I, I hope he heal. Now y'all done said I left some man on the altar. Nah, nah, nah. He's shitty and like, yeah. and it's that's a tough. notebook involved with two number two uh, pencils. That, you know what? I ain't got time. And, nah, nah. nah. and now they got depression. It's hey. mental health. Y'all done went depression. all the way back to something. Yeah, all because I all because cycle that you brought him. Look, man. And now we fuck boys. Now we fuck. You know. Crazy. How did we get there? The notebook. It was a notebook. The notebook was a segue. The notebook. The notebook yeah. was a segue. Notebook, man. Go funny. watch it. <laughs> I don't know. I was just watch, I was watching them go for See, it. See, that's because you were talking about spending. No, I'm not making no well, more U turns with you. I'm yeah, not making we, no we more U turns. I'm not spending no more blocks. Spending the block. I just, like, in my eyes, like, I'm not taking anything else serious until I know in my heart that this old chapter is completely closed and never coming back open. Because that's not fair to my, you know, my new partner. And I agree with you. They going to ask, like, if they might ask, you know, is there anybody you, is there anybody I got to worry about from your past or you still got a connection with so-and-so? And I agree with you. And that's why oh, you okay, don't cool. enter into another relationship oh, until well, those things oh, well, happen. Then, then Nobody we said things. we was just jumping the oh, room. Yeah, while your heart that's still, healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good, good. Okay. I said I'm healed. Okay, but <laughs> Well, <laughs> women are much here. better than, at okay. that. Yeah, we're not doing think. those things. We're, okay, we're making good. mature decisions, right? Yeah. Because we're not playing with other people's time or feelings because I wouldn't want my time or my feelings wasted either, right? Yeah. So we're not doing that. We're going to be friends. We're going to hang out. Yeah. We're going to see how we feel about each other. We're going to get comfortable. We're going to talk about those things. Yeah. We're going to be honest the first time when we, when we ask those questions. The first time. 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 Yes. You feel me? And if he's not. I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't know who you was, I wanna know who you was doing during this interim. What she was doing or who you was doing with. Don't tell me nothing. Is it going to work or not? That's it. I don't want to know nothing. Don't ask me shit because I ain't going to ask you shit. <laughs> you know? I don't want to know. We ain't going through phones. Oh, I don't go through phones. I don't. Through no, phones. I don't do that shit. My shit gets gone through. I don't go through phones. Because if you look, you're going to find something. It doesn't mean that your girl is, you know, out there, like, you know, being a vagabond. But if you look, you are going to find something that gets you upset. Maybe not. But for the most part, you are. Gonna find something. You're going to find something. You're going to find something. Even if it's just something silly like, it's oh, my love. Why the fuck you calling this bitch my love? Why she's your love? You know, like. Or you go and you find something from the past and it's. It, why like, is it before, still in your phone? This was five you, years you know, ago. You know, you yeah, it's, and you still turn up. So, yeah. Just. Don't it's look just, un- un- unless you're ready to dip. That part. That's it. Makes sense. And then, um, so you were talking about how your, your team is really important to you. So, mm-hmm. I know, like, you know, especially being in this industry, um, I mean, just in life, they say if you want to go fast, go by yourself. If you want to go far, go with the team. So um, I'm taking that very serious. Me personally, like in my line of business, just getting connected to all the people around the so-and-so important people, you know, because it's the stylist, it's the, the 
engineers and producers. It's the um, the publicist that really has all the access and really makes that person, you know, who they are to the public. Um, so I'm just learning the importance of, you know, having a team and then also reaching out to people surrounding. You know, other it's a, I feel like it's a collaborative effort because you can't make something out of nothing. Teamwork makes the dream. Teamwork makes the dream. Yeah. All, the, all the superstars, yeah. you know all the saying? super successful people, not even just in entertainment, just in business, in anything in general, they all have a team of people that make everything work because yeah. it takes different minds and different perceptions yeah. exactly, to play their roles. And everybody just got to know their role. Yep. And it yeah. works. Yeah. Yep. And when it all comes together and the synergy Beautiful. of everyone, you can really tell. You can really, really see it when everyone's operating at 100% and doing, you know, doing their job um, at their highest capacity. And you can see it when they lose a team or when one of the team members leaves as well, you know. Um, I work with a lot of artists who they lose, you know, um, an A&R or a producer or, you know what I mean, a, a good manager or a good publicist. And you just see the difference. Um in some, you know, in their career, and it's really, it's, it's a big difference. Yeah. Well, guys, <laughs> thank you guys for coming. You know, we got some, you know, some good information on mental health and everything else. But I appreciate every one of you guys coming. Thank you for having sure. us. Sure, thank yeah, you for thank having you us, so bro. Much. Thank, thank you, bro. Thank All right. you. <laughs> you guys stay tapped into the Perfect Network. We out of here.